we're gonna be taking off quite a lot of material and we're not gonna be running any coolant with them. So things are gonna heat up with this part. Oh, you said it was 100 pounds? Yeah, 100 pounds spinning on 2,700 SFM. Nope. What's up, everyone? This is Tyson at Titans of CNC. Today, I'm gonna to be turning a big 12 and a half inch piece of cast iron that weighs 130 pounds, and we're gonna be turning it into a brake rotor. Let's load it up. This thing's no joke. It's actually kind of crazy spinning a piece this big at 2000 RPM. That's a lot of weight to be spinning around, but these shunk claw jaws are gonna hold it in no problem. Now the tool I'm gonna be running for the first stop is a CNGA insert with a 63 thousandths radius. And the grade we're gonna be using is the KYK10 insert from Kenna Metal. The KYK10 is a ceramic grade insert and it's good for running cast iron. It withstands high temperatures easily, and you can run the tool either wet or dry. Because you can run it dry, it actually works out for us when we're trying to film this, so it's gonna look pretty crazy. Now, the only catch with this particular grade is that this is a grade that's made for smooth cutting with little interruptions. They have other grades if you need to take an interrupted cut on the part, but for straight turning, this is probably your best bet on cast iron. Let's fire it up. So those are some pretty nice cuts. Took that depth of cut of 100 thousandths, no problem. So the next tool I got up is this big two and a half inch KCEM drill. I'm gonna be running it with the KC7140 inserts. They're good for cast iron. And for the speeds, I'm gonna be running it at 500 SFM with a feed rate of 10 thousandths per revolution. Now I'm a little bit nervous about running this drill. It's a big drill to be running without coolant and Barry gave me this drill and I don't know what he did to it, but it's got a little bit of rub on the side here. So I'm a little nervous about running it without coolant, but it should be fine. Looks like the drill ran no problem. Next up, we got a boring bar, which is using the same KYK10 insert as the first roughing tool. With this tool, we're gonna rough out the entire ID and I'm gonna leave 10 thousandths per wall on each side. I'm gonna run it just a little bit faster at 2700 SFM with a feed rate of 7 thousandths per revolution. I'm also going to put a spindle limit on the spindle of 2,500 RPM. I'm putting that limit because this part's pretty heavy. I'm confident in these jaws, but I don't want this part to go spinning way too fast. I don't think I'm gonna hit that limit, but it's there just in case. All right, so let's start this up. Sounds like you're about to take off in the flight over here. Yeah, no kidding, I'm terrified. How fast are you running? Uh, 2,700. Oh, you're just babying it then. Oh, jeez. The part's like 100 pounds, though. Oh, you said it was 100 pounds? Yeah. Nope.
So we just finished roughing out the ID. That was pretty crazy. Look at these chips, just complete powder. It was a little scary starting that last operation off at 2700 SFM, and it pretty much stayed that way through most of the cut, but these claw jaws handled it no problem. For the next tool, we have a Beyond Evolution OD Groover with a KCU25 insert. It's 157 thousandths wide with a 15 thousandths radius. We're gonna rough and finish the OD groove of the part with one tool. For the speeds and feeds, I'm gonna rough it out at 500 SFM with a feed rate of four and a half thousandths per revolution. And for the finish pass, we're gonna drop it down to 350 SFM with a feed rate of three thousandths inches per revolution. I just ran the OD groove pass. It looks really nice. For the next operation, we have a finish pass on the face and OD. I left 10 thousandths on all the operations, so this is gonna bring everything to size and give it a nice finish. The insert I'm gonna be using is the same kind of CNGA insert that I used on the first operation. It's got the same ceramic grade, the KYK10 grade, but this time it's got a smaller radius. We're gonna be running a 46 thousandths radius insert. And for the speeds and feeds, I'm gonna take it to 2,200 SFM with a feed rate of 3 thousandths per revolution. A cool thing about this pass is that I'm actually gonna be using the same tool to hit both the OD and the ID of the part. I'm gonna add a rotation after it does both the face and the OD pass, and we're gonna rotate the tool sideways and hit the inside of the part. So let's get this finished and we can get on to the next side. So I got our part clamped now for OP2. I made some ID jaws using our Rota NCR six jaw chuck from Shunk. Clamping on the inside. For the first stop on this side, we're gonna bring back our OD CNGA rougher. One little thing with this roughing operation is that because of the distance between the top of the part and the center hole is so big, I'm not gonna face it first. I'm gonna turn on the outside of the part first and then we're gonna face it and bring it closer, leaving 10 thousandths of material on all sides. For the speeds and speeds, we're gonna run it a little bit slower because I'm not holding it in claw jaws anymore. I'm gonna go 2,500 SFM with a feed rate of six thousandths per revolution. And for the depth of cut, I'm still gonna take 100 thousandths on the OD, but for the face passes, I'm only gonna be taking 60 thousandths. We're gonna be taking off quite a lot of material with these ceramic KYK10 inserts, and we're not gonna be running any coolant with them. So things are gonna heat up with this part. So let's get going with OP2. Got a lot of material that just came off this part and the part's still pretty hot. 
Those ceramic inserts are crazy. I love watching them cut, the sparks coming off the tool. It's so cool. So the next three tools I've got coming up on this part are Kenna Metal's HPR drills. I'm gonna be putting a lot of holes on the faces of this part. Most of the holes are gonna be going on to this big surface. That's gonna be the quarter inch holes. They're gonna go all the way through the parts. And then we're also gonna be drilling the front of the part with a 5 16 drill and an 11.5 millimeter drill. Let's get going, we've got some drilling to do. For all these drills, I'm gonna be running them at 500 SFM with a feed rate of 70 inches per minute. Got a lot of holes on the part. We have these smaller holes on the part and that's to distribute heat and reduce weight while the front holes are where we're going to fasten the brake disc into the car. The next tool coming up is our CNGA finisher, the 46 thousandths radius one we used on the first operation. This is going to smooth out all the leftover rough surfaces on the parts. I'm also doing the same rotation as the first op to where I'm going to rotate the tool so that I can finish the inside of the parts. We're going to use one tool to finish the OD, the faces, and the inside of the part. Let's go. We just ran the finish tool. Part looks really nice now. One thing you might have noticed was I went down on this top face instead of going up it. And that was to get a nice surface finish on the part because part of it's sticking up a little bit from my jaws. So I did some down cutting for the finish pass and the part looks beautiful. Now for our very last tool, I'm gonna deburr all of these holes on the part on this side. I have a dual lock five flute camper tool and I'm gonna run it at 500 SFM at a feed rate of 35 inches per minute since this is just the final finishing touch. For this chamfer pass, I'm gonna go in a circular motion on all the holes except for the smallest hole on the face, which I'm gonna go straight in with the tool because that's the largest chamfer on the part. So let's get going. That was the last tool. I could run my fingers now through all these holes. We got a small chamfer on each of them, so fingers aren't getting cut up. The part looks amazing. I'm really happy with the way those KYK10 inserts cut. We removed a lot of material and we were able to run it dry and at a fast speed. The ceramic inserts are amazing. It was kind of unreal the speeds we were spinning this heavy part at first, but we had absolutely no problems at all holding the part in the shunk claw jaws. And then for the second side, gripping the part with a six jaw chuck, we were able to do the back side and remove all that material on the second side. And the part looks great. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. 
I'm gonna go take this part and see if anybody's missing a brake right now and wants to test it out. So I'll see you guys later.